Okay, but let's move on. I want to get on to our feature story, very similar about Russia, Ukraine, and then we'll just move on into Super Chats. So our feature story here is about Facebook, and this is very much along the same lines. All of the meta platforms, which is Facebook, Instagram, all the other Facebook properties, they have now changed their terms of service to allow people to threaten Russian citizens and the Russian government. Incite violence against them, talk about violence, celebrate violence against them. That has all been made permissible on the platform. And these are the biggest platforms in the world. And this is the article. It says, quote, Meta platforms will allow Facebook and Instagram users in some countries to call for violence against Russians and Russian soldiers in the context of the Ukraine invasion, according to internal emails seen by Reuters on Thursday, and a temporary change to its hate speech policy. The social media company is also temporarily allowing some posts that call for death to Russian President Vladimir Putin or Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, according to internal emails to its content moderators. A Meta spokesperson said, quote, As a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we have temporarily made allowances for forms of political expression that would normally violate our rules, like violent speech, such as death to the Russian invaders. We still won't allow credible calls for violence against Russian civilians. The calls for the leaders' deaths will be allowed unless they contain other targets or have two indicators of credibility, such as location or method. Citing the Reuters story, Russia's embassy in the U.S. demanded that Washington stop the extremist activities of Meta. Uh, the embassy said, quote, Users of Facebook and Instagram did not give the owners of these platforms the right to determine the criteria of truth and pit nations against each other. The temporary policy changes... Uh, on calls for violence to Russian soldiers applied to Armenia, Azerbaijan, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. In the email recently sent to moderators, Meta highlighted a change in its hate speech policy. It says, quote, we are issuing a spirit of the policy allowance to allow T1 violent speech that would otherwise be removed under the hate speech policy when A, targeting Russian soldiers, B, targeting Russia, where it's clear the context is the Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, and then the content has to mention the invasion, self-defense, etc., according to the email. So this is what is now permissible on Facebook and Instagram. It just goes to show, and I've said this all the time, it's not about violence. It's not about hate speech. It is all contextual. It is all based on political context. If you needed any other proof, all these restrictions, all the moderation, it is all about political control. Because you still get some of these liberals that say, oh, well, did you ever think that Facebook just didn't want racists on their platform? It's like, clearly that is not the issue at hand. It is not so-called racism in itself or hatred or violence in itself. It is the kinds of racism. It is the kinds of hatred, the kinds of violence that have a political context. Because the hatred and the racism and the violence that they like is permitted. And when it's not permitted, they change the rules to permit it. When it's mainstream media attacking white people, that's a form of racism which is accepted. When it is liberals or left-wing people hating us, doxing us, threatening to kill us, threatening to kill Trump or whatever, that's totally allowed. And there's no qualm there about advertisers or decency or anything like that. And then the same goes for this. Suddenly now violence is okay. That was supposed to be their one red line. And now you could say things like death to Russia and so on. Really? So which is it? Are you against violence or are you against uh, particular kinds of violence based on the political agenda at the time? And then you have to question, okay, well, what is Facebook's role then in the world? What is the role of Facebook and Instagram that they get to determine what two and a half billion people say about a conflict like this? Who elected Mark Zuckerberg? What accountability does he have? Should that guy, just a private guy, and who's pulling the strings, but should some private company with no accountability to anybody 
Is it their responsibility? Is it their role? Should they have that role of moderating a global conversation about war and peace? Like, to me, that just seems wrong. And that's where a lot of these liberals need to wake up. Who's really in control here? This whole Russia-Ukraine thing is exposing some very dark things about how our society is really, is really run. Because what you're seeing is that they're all on the same page. All the companies that have pulled out of Russia, the banks, the global financial system, the IMF, the World Bank, NATO, the European Union, the World Economic Forum, the State Department, the social media giants, Facebook, Instagram, all the news agencies, they're all on the same page. And look at the kind of war effort that has been mounted without, without guns or bombs or anything like that. Look at the war machine that's been mounted against Russia. Look at what they've been able to achieve. It lays bare the real situation, which is we are not a benign hegemon. This is not a peaceful democracy. This is not what you think it is. This is a, a malevolent empire. The, the U.S. regime is a malevolent empire. And behind all the, all the nice words, all the flowery language about who we are in our democracy, behind all of that is real hard power. Real hard power, and they're willing to back it up. Behind all of that is a global conspiracy of the most powerful people in the world, and they control communication, transportation, finance, the currency, and the flow of information. That's what underlies the whole thing and their advantage, their profit, and their benefit. That's what it's all about. And they could dress it up real nice and talk about our democracy and he's like Churchill and all this kind of stuff. But it's a big protection racket. It is a, it is a global criminal syndicate. Make no mistake about it. And you see the stuff they're doing in Ukraine with the Hunter Biden laptop and with the, what they're doing in Kazakhstan with the Uranium One deal and what they just found now at these bio lab, uh, the, these bioweapon laboratories in Western Ukraine. It's like, gee, what's really going on here? It seems like this whole thing is just a giant farce. Everything that we have been led to believe about our system, that it's all about cooperation and freedom and democracy, turns out that it's not like that. And everybody, I think, on some level understands that, but this is just a raw demonstration of how the, all this really works, how all, all this stuff really operates. They want Ukraine bad, and it's got nothing to do with democracy. They want Ukraine badly because they want to control the whole world. And they are going to jeopardize world peace to do it. Russia intervenes, and now look at how Russia's been vilified. And look at, look at how everything's been turned. Look at how they ramped up this machine, took control of global propaganda, pulled the currency reserves. People do not yet understand the implications of everything that's being done here. This is something with historical significance. This is a world historical moment. If the Crimean War defined in some ways to find the concert of Europe in the 19th century. This Crimean War, this Crimean crisis, Ukrainian war, it's certainly defining the first half of the 21st century, certainly. And I said this before, didn't I? I said there's something weird about this war when I said it's very self-conscious where you've got these competing claims about false flags and there's this brinksmanship going on. So this is scary stuff. Facebook says you can now say death to Russia. This is one of these wars, right? I know people say 1984 a lot, but I mean, you know. That's where we're headed, the kind of power and control they have. And that's the problem with democracy is it has to be laundered through the public opinion. So the brainwashing is an essential part as opposed to other forms of government where they hate the government, but they know they can't do anything about it. So this is spooky stuff, spooky scary.